NBC anchor and NBC News correspondent Katie Turr. She's out today with a new memoir entitled Rough Draft. I love the title, and we'll get to that in just a moment. I can't wait to hear about that, Katie. But I know you're also covering the January 6th uh, committee hearings, and I'm, I'm wondering, especially given that you've covered Trump so extensively, if you're noticing any patterns or what are your takeaways? Um, uh, yes, I have noticed some patterns, <laughs> as I know you guys have. Th this is yeah. the way he has acted and the way that he has um, attacked headlines he doesn't like, news he doesn't like. Since the very beginning, he'll deny it's happening and he'll look for an alternate source of information and then use that. I was struck so much by, by not just how the hearings have been laid out so far. I think they've been extremely compelling. I think it is incredible to see uh, Trump's advisors, his allies on tape, under oath, telling the truth, saying that they knew the election wasn't stolen, that there was no fraud, and that they told the president over and over and over again, over and over and over again, and over and over and over again, and he just didn't want to hear it, that he actively looked for other information. Um, I think what Bill Barr said under oath was very interesting, that n there was never an indication of interest and what the actual facts were. So instead of listening to all of his advisors and his uh, attorney general or his deputy uh, acting attorney general who was going out and chasing down all of the conspiracies that he was being fed, the whack-a-mole, as Joe was saying, instead he listened to the guy who was um, allegedly, according to those under oath, drunk on, on election night. And, and the why that did he do that? When Zoe Lofgren tied that back to the grift, tied that back to the $250 million that were raised off those emails, and you get those emails, as I do, blanketing mm -hmm. your inbox every single day, telling you you're special, and Donald Trump wants to know why you haven't signed up, why you're not on the team, why you haven't given money, come have a dinner with us, we're raffling it off, et cetera. Um, using that money to, to not fight the election fraud as they were claiming it was, but instead to, to pay off campaign debt or to, to pay off um, those in their orbit to give speeches. I think that was really interesting. And, and the kicker, Mika and Joe and, and Willie, um, I thought was, I got a text from a, a, a Donald Trump campaign advisor from 2016, uh, an ally, um, and they said that this was a campaign ad for Ron DeSantis. And I wonder if that's what the inner orbit of Donald Trump, Trump might be worried about. Not so much Donald, not so much Joe Biden, but what does this do to bolster Ron DeSantis, who is who is like Trump, but without all this baggage? If there's one thing that'll get Donald Trump's attention is that the people like somebody else, and he might steal his thunder yeah. in 24. We were talking. This sort of dovetails the story that we're covering now mm -hmm. with your book about covering the Trump campaign, uh, famously, as you were known infamously as little Katie to the former president of the United States. I am little. But also, well, you're, you're big in more important <laughs> ways uh, as a journalist. And so we were talking about Bill Barr coming out right after the Mueller report came out as attorney general and before the true facts and the true summary of what was in that report can come out of his sort of intercepting the narrative and creating one that wasn't exactly what was inside. So in the book, it's a memoir. It's got a lot about um, how I grew up and my parents in the journalism business and what they did that led us to how we cover the news today. Um, and I think what we saw with the Bill Barr episode when he came out and summarized the Mueller report, and I read about this, is we saw an instance of misinformation getting a, a running start ahead of the right. truth. And that has been the story for so much of the way that we've had to cover Washington now for so many years. Misinformation gets out there, it gets repeated over and over again, and there are lots of people out there who never really get a chance to hear the truth. By the tr time the truth gets to them, they've already been so convinced by the lies and the misdirection that the truth never had a chance. And what happened when we covered the bar summary, and you guys remember this, we all did it in real time, Barr came out and said, I'm going to give you a summary of the Mueller report. It's going to come out a little bit later, but I'm going to summarize it. And we were, you know, we were like a little boat in the middle of the ocean in, in the pitch black. You never knew what was going to jump out and bite you. You didn't know where you were going. So whatever he gave us was all we had, and we had no time to fact check it. We had no time to get the context because we didn't have the full report. And that is a symptom of, of the media world that we live in, where we are covering everything live, 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 now, now, now. And I know we'd all like to go back to a time where we could take a breath and not cover it, and that would be wonderful, but if we did not cover it, 
we would have other outlets who don't like us saying that we refused to tell the truth and we didn't like it because Donald Trump looks good in this. So we're in like, it feels as if it, in the moment we are in, we're in, a, we're in a circular firing squad where the truth is the loser. Hmm. And, and you it's know, it, it, Mika, mm. yeah, you know, Mika, Very also about the Mueller report that it, it's those are fascinating insights. Also, you know, I think a lot of us, uh, even though we understood Donald Trump lied and people around him lied, yeah. you would think that Bill Barr would be smart enough to not put out a summary that was as deliberately misleading as it was. It was, but he did. Incredible. It, it was. So, Katie, I want to ask you. Okay. I was going to I was going to mention look at what he said under oath and and this was uh, yeah. uh, we were reminded of this he said all this under oath that he was detached from reality that he was doing a disservice to the public but he resigned and wrote glowingly about the president so he wasn't telling the public yeah. at the time it's it's very confounding to say the least it's really hard to understand um, let's talk about your book rough draft I love it um, it's an incredibly personal story um, you you really go there you share your journey um, with your parents as a couple in the news business and also as individuals and I'm curious um, what it was like for you, the, the process, the emotional process of, of the joys, the challenges, the changes, the surprises, putting that all to paper, what was that like for you? Well, I don't know about you guys, but the pandemic um, felt very isolating. And going down into my basement and doing my broadcast every day alone and not having the contact contact with, with you and with our teams here at NBC News, with my show staff, um, got my head spinning. And I started to wonder what I was doing with my life and where I was going and whether journalism was was what I wanted to, a journalist was what I wanted to be. So I, um, you know, in, 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 in this forced self-reflection, my mom sent over a hard drive and it was the size of a microwave. And in that hard drive was all of the news footage my parents shot over the years, plus all of our childhood videos. And my parents shot OJ, they shot the Reginald Denny beating and the riots, the LA riots, every police pursuit you saw uh, from the air in the 80s and 90s in Los Angeles. My parents shot that and it was a whole history that I. I had been frankly uh, uh, Mika running away from because while it was adventurous and fun and wild and unlike anything that anyone else was experiencing it was also filled with rage and scary moments my dad um, when I was growing up would get very angry and, and um, at the time he she my dad is a tr has transitioned and she's a she now but I'll say he because this was in the past um, he would punch walls He'd throw batteries at my mother. He would be emotionally volatile with the whole family. Sometimes he got physical with my brother and I, and it was hard. And so I'd been running away from it. And I realized that in order to figure out where I was going and what kind of journalist I wanted to be, if I wanted to continue being a journalist, I needed to go back. Um, I needed to go down into the crevasse, as Alec Baldwin would say, wow. in, in 30 Rock. And this is the process of that. So at times, um, it was joyous to write and fun and nostalgic and funny. And at other times, it got very hard. But, you know, uh, it's the truth. I'm so interested, Katie, in you hearing you because I think we all reevaluated, right? We looked at our lives and what's important to us. What was it about your job and your career that gave you some second thoughts for a minute? Well, the world we're living in, where nobody can agree on a, a set of facts or, or there's large division in, in this society. And it can sometimes feel like, am I, is anybody listening? Am I getting through to, am I getting through to anybody? Um, how do you convince somebody that they're being lied to? How do you convince somebody of the truth when they don't want to hear the truth? That it, this position was starting to feel futile. Um, and I wanted to figure out if it really was. And I, you know, I talk about going to a Trump rally in Macon, Georgia, and speaking to people there and wondering why they don't have any trust for um, a, a journalist in my position, you know, at this network. Um, and I, I talk about the bar summary. I talk about the, the straight line between what my parents did covering those police pursuits into what can feel like reality show TV and some of the media coverage that's out there now. Um, and I, the, the reflection of it, um, ultimately led me to thinking that we can make a difference. There are people out there who do want to hear the truth. There's a large swath of the public 
who wants to know what's going on. They're out there. We just have to find a way to speak to them. Got to get up and keep doing it every yep. morning. The new memoir is titled Rough Draft. Katie Turk, congratulations on the book. Thanks for coming in this morning. Say Thank hi to Tony. Me. Thank you. All right.